All right, hi everyone. I'm Leanne. I'm with the pharmacy technician program here at Seattle Colleges. Um, I'm a pharmacist actually by training. I went to UW School of Pharmacies, go Huskies. Um, and I'm also a physician assistant as well. I did the dual program at UW. Um, I have uh, been teaching at Seattle Colleges for the past seven years and um, am now also the full-time faculty and coordinator for the program. Uh, I'm excited to be here to talk to you guys about pharmacy and the farm tech program and what it's all about. Um, if you have questions, um, feel free to either dump it into the chat. I think there's somebody monitoring the chat. I'm not exactly sure actually. Um, or you can go ahead and uh, raise your hand, digital hand and, or unmute and let me know you have a question. Um, I'm happy to answer them uh, throughout our presentation. Okay, so let me click. Okay, here we go. Um, I wanna go over a little bit about what our program is like. So we are a farm tech program. And at our program, we train students to become licensed and certified farm techs within nine months. Um, that's really one academic year. And uh, that will give you the certificate option. Uh, and you can be working within nine months in the healthcare field. It's a really amazing uh, opportunity to sort of step into the healthcare career field, uh, work in a tech level, and really um, for those who wanna go on to further their education into other healthcare careers, it's really an exciting stepping stone. I put some pictures in here of farm techs that are working in, a, in the community. On the far left, we have our you know, retail pharmacy techs. Let me find my pointer here retail pharmacy techs here uh, working at a dispensing pharmacy. Then the second picture is of an IV technician, someone working in a either an inpatient pharmacy at a hospital or at a long-term care center that does infusions. Um, the third picture here is, is a technician who is working at a compounding pharmacy uh, where you actually get to make the medicine, like literally combine ingredients and make creams and capsules and suppositories. So it's really fun if you like following a recipe. Uh, and uh, making things on your own. And then the last picture here is really cool because uh, the state just approved technicians, farm techs to give immunizations. So now our technicians are getting licensed to give immunizations and they're actually on the front lines giving COVID vaccines. So it's a really fun time in our career. Uh, I'm with the North Seattle College uh, here in near Northgate area. Um, that's where our farm tech program is offered. And there are some requirements to get into the program. Uh, it's not very extensive, but things like you'll need a high school diploma and you do need to place into English 101 and place into Math 98. That means that you don't have to take the classes. You don't have to take English 101 and you don't have to take Math 98. You could have taken them in the past, but you do need to either take the class prior to English 101. So if you're graduating high school, that means that you're just finishing your high school English and that will put you into English 101. Or for math, you can take a placement exam and Math 98 is probably at the level of like trigonometry, intermediate algebra. Um, we also require some additional things like filling out the application, we'll conduct a background check and you will need to obtain your pharmacy assistant license and I'll go through when you are uh, ready to apply, I'll go through sort of how you can do that. Hold on, my clicker to advance the slide I disappeared here, just a minute. Okay, I think we're ready for some trivia. Um, I think it's fun to break up our session into some fun bits of knowledge about pharmacy and um, et cetera, things about it. So here's our first trivia point for the day. So look at what we have on the screen here. Uh-oh, hold on, sorry. I think my screen is not cooperating well. Um, what do all of these have in common here? So I'll give you a minute. You can go ahead and unmute and tell me what you think. Uh, they're all used as medicine or were used as medicine. Okay. They're all used as medicine or they were used as medicine. Okay. Any other like cool thoughts or ideas? Probably because that's, that's a pretty uh, right on the spot answer. Um, well, other than the fact that these all contain some sugar, right? Even medications contain sugar. And um, they all contain a, a drug or a medication like you identified correctly. Um, but did you know that a lot of our common sodas were created by pharmacists? So this guy here, 
John Pemberton, uh, it was back in the 1880s um, <clears throat> where it was sampled and stated brilliant. Um, and he kept on sale for five cents a glass at his soda fountain pharmacy. So John Pemberton was a pharmacist. And then what about Pepsi? Pepsi was invented by Caleb Bradham. It, was, it used to be known as Brad's drink uh, at his pharmacy shop in, back in 1893. This is probably the more famous one that people know was created by a pharmacist. Uh, Charles Alderton back in 1880 created Dr. Pepper and he coined it liquid sunshine. Uh, and he created it because it kind of has a unique smell to Dr. Pepper, right? He created it because he thought that it smelled like an actual drugstore. Very interesting, right? <laughs> and our prescriptions here, Benjamin Franklin was actually the founder of pharmacy in the US. Amongst his many other skills, he's the guy who created the first separate dedicated pharmacy space here in the US in the mid 1700s. Okay, that was our trivia. Let's move on. Now we are a pharmacy program. So naturally a very large part of our focus is medications. Uh, we learn all about medications, you know, how they work, why people take them, how to take them correctly, and how they're prescribed by the doctor. Um, and believe it or not, uh, there are over 20,000 medications approved by the FDA in our country today. And no, we're not going to learn all 20,000 of those, uh, but we will cover the top like 200 to 300 most commonly prescribed meds in the country. Uh, also, we learn about all the different types of pharmacies out there, you know, and how you would work in each of them. Um, you probably know about the community pharmacy type, you know, the one like the Bartels or Rite Aid or Walgreens that you see on your, on your corner at your street here. Uh, but we also have pharmacies in hospitals. Uh, and these are inpatient pharmacies that serve the patients that are like staying in the hospital like overnight. And in the hospital, we also have an outpatient pharmacy for those who are going out of the hospital. Uh, and then we also have techs who work in like the emergency room to take what they call med reconciliation. So they take the interview of patients who are arriving in the ER to go over their med list. So there's a lot of roles you could play in a hospital. Then we have the LTC pharmacy, we call them long-term care pharmacies and they take care of nursing home patients. So we'll put things in like blister packs and bingo cards and a little like medi set so patients can take their medicines uh, most uh, easily and simply. And then I talked about a little bit earlier that there are pharmacies that um, actually we make medicine there. Like we take the raw ingredients and mix it all up and make a cream or an ointment or a chapstick or suppositories. It's kind of fun if you like cooking, you have to kind of love following a recipe and sort of making things with your hands, but it's a really fun niche part of pharmacy. And we have quite a few compounding pharmacies here in the Washington area. And uh, we also have something called a mail order pharmacy. Uh, if you have any experience with this or maybe your parents do, but it, even in this pandemic, we're really familiar with mail order orders from stores, right? Now pharmacies also operate by mail order as well. And a really big company in our local area, Amazon, just opened their mail order pharmacy in Kent and they're calling me for technicians. So they want you guys to graduate so they can hire you. So that's a lot of different types of pharmacies. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. The insurance company. You can even work at an insurance company and manage their formulary drug lists. And that's like a nine to five desk job. So it's kind of cool if you wanna do something more office space related. So that's a lot of different types of pharmacies and there's still more types. You know, our instructors in our program have extensive experience in several of these practice types. And uh, our program is well connected to the pharmacy world out there. So a lot of our students complete their externships, um, which basically is like an internship. Uh, and they're out there working at the pharmacy during their schooling, okay, at each of these types of pharmacies. So I have students that are at each of these kinds of pharmacies right now, actually. Okay, we're ready for our next trivia. So um, anyone recognize this guy? Go ahead, unmute. Is it a gecko? It looks like a gecko, right? It's like in the 
like a far cousin of that family. There's a special name for this, this guy here. Is that the Gila monster? Ooh, wow. Bingo. This lizard looking creature is the Gila monster, right? They live in the Southwest US and New Mexico, um, like desert areas. And their saliva is what we use to make a diabetes drug called Bietta. Okay. Um, and that drug works on patients who have diabetes. It's a diabetes med. But this is not the first time we're using an animal like either saliva or a venom to treat human illness. For example, do you recognize this guy? That's the cone snail. And cone snail venom is used to make a drug for chronic pain. Its venom is actually 100 times more potent than morphine. Or how about this guy? That's a deadly viper. And um, his uh, saliva is used for hypertension drugs. And lastly, not the last one that's out there, but lastly for us today, uh, what about this leech? This leech is used to make herudin, which is a blood thinner. Um, so such interesting discoveries to treat diseases and neat ways to make medicine too. Okay, um, I'm gonna um, flop screens. I wanna show you a short video of our program. I think the video will give you an idea of how the program runs, what degree options you have, and you'll meet a few students um, and a few pharmacy people out there. Uh, and you'll also get to see the classroom because since we're not on campus, if we were on campus, you get to see the classroom in person, we'd be making some medicine. We'd be actually cooking up meds today. But we, since we can't be there, uh, this is the closest next best thing we can do. So um, I hope you enjoy this video. So go ahead. Um, let me know if you can't hear the sound. I, I try to enable the sound here. So here we go. North has an excellent reputation. For the program itself specifically, uh, it really it changes, you know. And to me, it seemed better because um, they had more variety as far as placement in, in, in uh, the externship uh, experience. This by far would be one of our, our recommendations is that they produce very good quality students. From people that I've talked to outside the school, um, I would have to say that it's one of the most successful programs in the area. I consider it the best in the state. The Pharmacy Tech program here is nine months long. We start new cohorts in September, which is fall quarter. The big things uh, with our program is one, we're state run, so cost. Two, we have a lot of the nice technology. Um, and three, we have staff that have been um, in the pharmacy field for quite some time um, and are still in the field. The students do first quarter intense lecture courses and then second quarter they do a combination of classes and externship. Third quarter they Oh, somehow it stopped in the middle. I'm sorry. Let me try to get this through. Harborview Swedish. A lot of students get a job from one of their externships. As long as you put forth the effort and show them that you are willing to learn and you can do everything that they need you to do, if they have an opening, they're gonna to wanna to hire you because you've already done the training. I have, I have hosted uh, and worked with plenty of students from the program and uh, I've employed a lot of them. They are well-trained. They are very professional, um, they take their job very seriously, and they're uh, passionate about their work. Actually, we've been fortunate. We've actually had hired three pharmacy technicians that have come out of North Seattle College. And personally, myself, you know, I got hired before I graduated. That's, that's convincing for me, at least. The program has minimum requirements of, for prerequisites, Math 98, 
which is basically a little bit above um, intermediate algebra, and then as well as English 101. But usually students who do well are hardworking students, students willing to put the time and effort in studying. Um, the other thing I would say a big factor is loving people because there's a lot of patient interaction. So I think your ability to, to be able to communicate with people and to be able to relate to people, to show empathy for people, allows you to become uh, an excellent technician or an excellent pharmacist. I think the caring piece is, is truly, truly the foundation of what we do. High-tech equipment, one of the things that we have is a Pixis machine, um, which is an automated dispensing system that uh, inpatient facilities use. Students are also doing data entry for outpatient scripts. Um, we use a software system called QS1, uh, where they learn how to read um, SIG codes, doctor's handwritings, um, and then they enter the prescriptions, interpret um, what he or she is writing on the prescriptions, and then type it in a way that patients can understand it. And then the last thing we do is we do sterile and non-sterile compounding. So the general certificate is a nine-month program, um, and that's given by the college um, for completion of the program. We started out this quarter, the students will also get a program certificate for completion of the program, which will have our ASHP accreditation. And then some students who have additional classes, um, some of our students who've taken other classes, um, also apply for the ASD, which is the Associates in Science degree, which is basically a two-year in pharmacy tech or um, some other technical field that they have. Throughout a cohort, we have probably between one to five students who get into pharmacy school. Um, a lot of them also go on to other things like uh, nursing. Uh, some of them do radiology. Um, we've had some become doctors and PAs. <clears throat> and so um, a lot of them, it's a good stepping stone, but it's also a good uh, field that if they just want, like to be in the technical area, they can stay in it. This is actually a very life-sustaining field to be in. And the job opportunities are just endless these days. I think it's a, it really is a great program and I've enjoyed the heck out of it. And really, really good relationship with North Seattle and of course there are professors there who are teaching and also the relationship that we've had with the students. We've been able to have a, technicians come in with a solid foundation that we can definitely build on. And that's really helped, and that, that's, you know, technicians uh, really stand out that way from, from uh, North Seattle College. All right. So that was our program, and that was our classroom. You guys got to see our classroom and some of the stuff that we do there. They were actually making medicine, compounding medicine, uh, in those videos. That's something kind of fun. Um, so I want to go over a few things. So like the video mentioned, students complete an externship during winter quarter and spring quarter. Uh, we do require about 432 hours of externship to graduate, and students typically get job offers uh, before they graduate directly from their site. Uh, we currently have over 30 sites affiliated uh, with our program for externship, and already for our current cohort this year, four of them have received job offers and we haven't even gotten through our last quarter yet. It's only April, right? Um, so if you have time, check out indie.com. I think um, if you haven't, it's very uh, cool to see that there are so many jobs out there. So many jobs. I mean, if you look at Indeed, look at my post here or that I found online just a couple of days ago. Uh, at that time, there were 414 jobs available in the Seattle area alone. Um, so it's needless to say that there, the job market is really hot out there and, uh, there are employers calling me on a weekly, if not daily basis, asking me for graduates or students who are in the program so that they can hire them, uh, and really get, um, get their talent pool up to speed with, uh, the needs that are out there in the pharmacy world, uh, 414 jobs guys. That's just in Seattle alone. And look at the type of jobs out there. The first page I showed you was like Bartels and retail pharmacies. Here we have Genoa, which is in the Capitol Hill area. And it's like a um, full service pharmacy for mental health centers. And then we have QFC, which is down in the Capitol Hill area. They do a lot of HIV medicine. Um, and 
And then we even have Swedish health services, so Swedish hospitals looking for a med reconciliation tech. And that's someone who works in the ERs and interviews patients who come through to get their accurate med list. So they have a spot open in Issaquah and at the Edmonds ER. So uh, there are a variety of types of jobs out there and there are so many out there. Um, so I wanted you to see that because uh, the stats show that jobs are increasing at a very fast rate. I believe it's close to, I wanna say it's about 11 to 12% growth of rate per year of new jobs for farm techs in our area. And your starting wage just after just nine months of schooling is looking at about 19 to $21 per hour. In fact, one of our students just got offered a job uh, this, this month and they were offered $21 as a student who hasn't even graduated yet, you know? Um, and within a few years of, of working, you'll make around 21 to 24 per hour. Uh, and I know a bunch of farm techs out there who are at the high end and even higher than what's stated on this page, they're at the mid or upper 30s um, and they're in management and supervisory roles. Uh, throughout the hospitals and places like Amazon and places like that, that you can really increase your wage potential as you climb the different um, management levels at an institution that you work at. So it's pretty incredible uh, wage potential for, you know, getting a nine month degree. And uh, we're certainly really fortunate to be in the Washington state because Washington state has the highest wage for farm techs in the nation. All right, one more trivia here. Since we talked about money, I thought this would be really appropriate. So um, this trivia is about the most expensive drug in the world, okay? A company named Novartis uh, makes this drug, Zolgensma. It's a one-time infusion for a genetic condition called spinal muscular atrophy uh, that occurs in childhood. So uh, let's hear, how much do you think this medication costs. Any ideas? Anyone want to take a stab at it? A million? Okay, I have an offer for a million. <laughs> Anyone else? Two million. Two million. I got another one for two million. One, one person for one million, another one for two million. <laughs> you guys are right in there. Okay. Um, this drug costs a whopping $2.2 million for that one dose. $2.2 million, right? Luckily, it's a one time treatment and not a monthly infusion. Okay. Uh, and the best news so far is that it seems to be working and saving the lives of many kids with this paralyzing genetic condition. So this is gene therapy. Uh, Zolgensma is a gene therapy medication. So uh, good job. You're very close, $2.2 million. So that's sort of what I have uh, for you. Um, I wanted to offer sort of some ideas of what our program is like in this session and talk about what opportunities are out there uh, for farm techs and what you might do when you graduate. Uh, I'm open to questions. Um, and, oh, this didn't show up early enough. Sorry, guys, let's go back a little bit here. I wanna leave you with some information about the program here as well. So we run our program in a hybrid style. So uh, we put all of our lecture material online and it's recorded so you'd watch it at home. Um, and you come to campus to work on labs and workshops. Uh, so our typical schedule, like in fall quarter, you'd be on campus on Mondays and Tuesdays, from like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. doing workshops and labs and discussions and sort of hands-on stuff. Um, and then Wednesday through Friday would be your days to work on everything online at home. Uh, and we'd stack our classes in that way so that you have more time to take care of your life responsibilities, uh, along with giving you um, better flexibility with your schedule. So fall and winter, we uh, meet on similar times on campus. You do start externships in winter quarter, so you would have to, excuse me, make yourself available Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well uh, to do externships. And then spring quarter, we're only on campus one day a week. Uh, typically, it's on Mondays, but it could be Monday or Tuesdays uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
uh, and then you would have the other four days available for externship in spring quarter. So that's kind of how our program runs and uh, the kind of time commitment you would need to do for the program itself. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, I think I see some questions in the chat box here. Um, I really hope, I have a question, will there be a chance to visit next year? I really hope there's a chance to visit uh, this year, <laughs> depending how COVID plays out. Uh, but I'd love to have you guys at on campus looking at our classroom and doing some demos in person. Um, do you have many people that want to change fields? I'm reading from the chat box, guys. Do you have any people that want to change fields like from medical assisting to pharmacy? Um, I do. It happens on occasion. Um, some students um, like might try one field of a health medical career and find out that that's not the best fit for them. And they'll kind of flop over to farm tech. Um, so uh, there are a lot of options. I would highly encourage you to contact an advisor and I'm happy to advise as well on behalf of the farm tech program uh, for like the best options that are available to you for health medical careers out there. Um, another question, is this just for North Seattle College? That is correct. This program is located at North Seattle College. Um, but like you see the schedule on the screen, uh, we kind of put all of our stack, stack all of our classes together on Monday and Tuesday. So um, schedule wise, you can, uh, we have students that come from all across the sound. They, some of the students live so far, I can't believe that they drive so far from uh, Mount Vernon and Marysville. We had student from Gig Harbor before. And um, so you can kind of stack your schedule so that you come to campus on Monday and Tuesdays and then you're at home Wednesday through Fridays. Uh, doing your online work and also externships. Another question, um, if they are a certified medical assistant, can they waive any classes? Um, I'd have to see their transcripts to kind of review what they have taken. It really depends on what courses they've taken. There isn't a whole lot to waive from a different program to our program, but I'm happy to look at the transcripts. Um, yes, thanks, John, for reminding, uh, reminding me that the light rail opens up in the fall. So transportation um, uh, is hopefully easier for a lot of you out there. Uh, it's just one long ride from wherever you are to campus. And we have a big sky bridge that goes over I-5. You just walk over to the campus and you can be right there in person on campus Monday and Tuesday starting in fall. So I encourage you to check it out. Let me know if you have questions. I have my phone number and email is the best uh, to contact me. Um, and uh, I think you guys are also might have advisors uh, linked up with you guys uh, on your end as well, but feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I think that's all the questions that were in the chat box. Um, there is a slide here to show you how to return to the main session um, by leaving the break room, breakout room. And I believe that, that after you go back to the main session, uh, there will be an opportunity to join session two for the next set of, um, of uh, information sessions. So thank you guys for your time. It was a pleasure to meet with you and good luck with everything. Thank you.